Hello students, today we're going to look at 2.4, which is the last section of this uh, chapter, and we're going to talk about area and perimeter of similar figures. Now you'll remember the other day we cut out some new shapes from some original Starburst wrappers, Edwards Pie triangles, and the cereal boxes, and we talked about it on Friday about the area and the perimeter and how things were different. So the first thing we're going to do is fill out a chart related to that, and then we're going to show it again on uh, tomorrow when you come to class about how to prove all of this. But we're going to just fill in some information on a chart and kind of listen as you go along because we're going to do some uh, sample problems using the information in this chart in just a second. So I'm going to give you a second to write down the chart. Uh, the first column is scale factor, the second column is perimeter, and the third column is area. And in parentheses up here we have the squared because you'll remember with area it's always square units. So take about uh, 30 seconds to draw this chart. You don't have to do the boxes. You can just do lines if you want to. I'm good with that. But take about uh, 15 seconds to do the chart, and then we'll talk about what's going to go in it. I could be singing the Jeopardy theme song right now, da, 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 but we'll won't. Okay, great. So you probably had time to draw this. Um, if not, we can draw it as we go. So we're going to talk about scale factor and what happens to the perimeter and the area of those similar, fact, similar figures when the scale factor changes. Okay, so let's start with perhaps doubling something. If I double, that means I'm multiplying by 2. And so when I double the lengths, let's say the lengths of the sides, as we did with our figures when we did the wrappers, if we double the length of our side, what happened to the perimeter? You're right, it doubled. So we multiply the perimeter times 2. So the original perimeter times 2 to get the perimeter of the new figure. But what happened to the area? Oh, Remember when we took um, the area? It wasn't just multiplying by 2, but it was multiplying by 2 squared because area is squared, so that would equal multiplying the old area by 4 to get the area of the new figure. Okay, but what if we tripled something similar to what we did with the starburst wrapper? When we tripled the starburst wrapper, we tripled the sides of the starburst wrapper. What happened to the perimeter? You're right, it also tripled, so we multiply the old perimeter times 3 to get the new perimeter, okay? But what happened to the area? You remember when we stuck it up on the board with the magnets and stuff? You're right, instead of just multiplying by 3 to find the new area, we multiply by 3 squared, which is the same as multiplying by 9. With the cereal box, we half which is the same as multiplying by one half. So we realize then that the perimeter of the new cereal box for smaller families was half the perimeter of the original cereal box. But what about the area? Oh, yeah. Instead of multiplying by half, we multiplied by one half squared which we found was the same as multiplying by one-fourth. But what is the scale factor? What's the letter that we use for scale factor? Anybody remember? I think I heard I almost said it. I almost said it on accident. What is the, the letter we use for scale factor? You're exactly right. I heard it all the way over here in the video. The scale factor is K. So if I know that my old perimeter is something and my scale factor is k, how do I find the new perimeter? You're right. I multiply by k. But what about to find area? If I know the old area, the area of the old figure or the original figure, and my scale factor is k, then how do I find the new area? I multiply it by k squared. And we have an extra box down here that's free. I drew too many. Oops. So we can leave it. You can erase it. It doesn't matter to me. This chart, I don't need you to memorize it, but I need you to know it. 
that when I'm looking for a new perimeter, I multiply the old perimeter by the scale factor. When I'm looking for a new area, I multiply the old area by the scale factor squared. So let's look at an example. When would we use this and why would we use this and how would we use this? So let's say I have a rectangle um, and it's my original rectangle and the rectangle has one side that is, let's say, three inches. But I also know that the perimeter equals 16 inches. And I also know that the area equals 15 inches squared. Okay, that information is given to me. I know that's the case. And I have a larger rectangle. And my larger rectangle has a side that measures four inches. And they want me to find out what the perimeter of the larger rectangle is and what the area of the larger rectangle is just with this information oh my gosh give me some more information people oh wait i don't need any more information i have enough because if you remember from the chart if i know the scale factor and i know the perimeter in the area then i can just multiply by some numbers so do i know the scale factor well not yet but let's find the scale factor we know that scale factor k is new over old. And one thing that we probably need to recognize is anytime you're given figures like this and, and they don't give you that information, the original one is always on the left and the new one is always on the right, okay? 99.76532% of the time, the original or the old is on the left and the new is on the right, okay? So my new measurement in this case would be four and my old measurement would be three so my scale factor k is four thirds now that i know the scale factor k is four thirds i can find the new perimeter sorry i had to my leg down there so now i know the old perimeter is 16. and remember from the chart if i'm looking for a new perimeter i just multiply the old perimeter times k so i know that my new perimeter we're going to call that perimeter prime is going to be the old perimeter, 16, times k, which is 4 thirds. And then I'd use my calculator and I'd figure out what it is. I'm not going to do that right now. But what about the area? Do I know the scale factor? Yes, the scale factor is 4 thirds. Do I know the old area? Yes, the old area is 15. So remember, when I'm dealing with area, I take my old area, which is 15, and I multiply it by the scale factor squared. So I would multiply that by 4 thirds squared. And I would just plug that into the calculator, and it would give me an answer as soon as I hit the Enter button. Just to recap, if I know the scale factor, which I figured out, and I know a perimeter and an area, then I can just use that scale factor to find the perimeter and the area of the new figures. Now, some of you are thinking, well, if I know that, I don't know any other sides, then I have to find it. You don't need any other sides. As long as I have a perimeter, whoops, a perimeter and a scale factor, I can find the perimeter. And if I know the area and the scale factor, I can find the area of the new figure just by using that information. Okay, here's our next problem, next example. Um, the example is, Bill has two doormats shaped like triangles with a scale factor of seven ninths. What is the ratio of their perimeters? Oops, there's an R in there. And areas. I'll read that one more time. Bill has two doormats 
shaped like triangles with a scale factor of 7 ninths. What is the ratio of their perimeters and areas? Hmm. What in the world? We don't have two triangles, okay? I've got two triangles, and we know that the scale factor is 7 ninths. Someone write that down. K equals 7 ninths. We also know that K equals new over old, right? So my new triangle is going to have a side measurement of 7, and my old triangle is going to have a side measurement of a 9. So which one's bigger? Oh, you're right, the old one's bigger. So I need a large triangle that has a measurement of 9 and a smaller triangle that has a measurement of 7. I know the scale factor, and now I can just draw a simple set of figures to figure out what that is. I don't need to know anything else. I just need to know that one side is 9 for the big triangle, one side is 7, because when I do new over old, I get 7 over 9. Now, what's the ratio of the perimeters? Well, the ratio is exactly the same thing as the scale factor, because the scale factor is written in a ratio. Ratio is another word for a fraction. Okay, So the ratio of their perimeters, ratio of perimeters is 7 ninths. But what about the ratio of the area? Remember, when we deal, uh oh that's off the screen. Hold the phone. The ratio of perimeter is 7 ninths, but when we deal with area, we have to take that scale factor and do what to it? Right, we have to square it. So the ratio of the area is not just 7 ninths, but it's 7 over 9 squared, which equals, what's 7 squared? Yeah, it's 49. What's 9 squared? Mm, yeah, it's 81. So that equals... 49 over 81. So the ratio of their areas is 49 over 81, but the ratio of their perimeters is 7 over 9. We're throwing in some vocabulary words that you know, but now we're tying them together with similar figures. Scale factor and ratio are exactly the same thing. Your practice problem for tonight is just one problem, that's all. And what I want you to do is to draw two triangles that have a scale factor of k equals 5 over 4. That's all. Just draw two triangles. They're not the same. One of them is going to be bigger than the other. But which one is bigger, the new or the old, based on k? And which one goes on the right, which one goes on the left, based on k? You know that the scale factor is 5 over 4, so draw me two triangles that have a ratio or a scale factor of 5 over 4. Take a picture of those triangles and send it to me through Edmodo using the turn-in button. You don't have to send me a picture of your entire notes, just the picture of those two triangles.